rid natural clay of the impurities that would hamper the creation or durability of a pot, the ancient Egyptians first had to sieve the clay or dry it out until it's in a fine grain form. Next, the application of water is all that the material requires in order to take the shape of a sturdy purified clay. At this point, it is malleable, but not durable. Mixing it with a temper, such as sawdust or sand, opens up the body of the clay so that it is ready for shaping. In addition to the kick wheel, which wasn't developed until 2000 BC, the tools that the ancient Egyptians used to shape pottery are still in use today. For our purposes, we're going to focus on hand tools. Generally made from scrap wood or stone, they were used to shape and angle the clay after the pot was initially shaped by hand. Here, you see prototypical hand tools. Paddles and anvils were used to smoothly shape outer surfaces, while sponges and rope were also utilized to texturize or smooth the shape of a pot towards the end of its creation. The ancient Egyptian potter would have already prepared his materials of purified clay, water, excess clay wrapped in linen to keep it fresh and moist, and temper. To add the temper to the clay, the potter would have wedged it in by kneading the clay on top of a layer of sawdust. To make a coil pot, the potter would have taken a sturdy base of clay and begun by adding coils, compressing each with its predecessors, and he would do this until the pot was built up to an acceptable size. This is a fairly quick and efficient way to build up a pot. Using his fingers, he would smooth out the surface of the pot, eventually taking water and unifying the surface of the object as a whole. The size of the coils and the relationship to one another allowed the pot to be molded into interesting shapes and sizes. Because of the loose, malleable nature of the material, applying pressure to the top of the work was enough to shape it into a spill-proof lip, although the inside of the object wasn't totally smoothed out for fear of stretching or crushing the clay, the very top of it was for aesthetic purposes. Like the contemporary artists of today, the ancient Egyptian potter would take artistic liberties with shaping his work in order to make it more visually appealing. To decorate a pot, either natural or man-made glaze would be applied with a paintbrush composed of wood and either human or animal hair, depending on the desired coarseness or smoothness of the pattern. The content of the designs ranged from narrative religious stories of the gods to geometric patterns that were meant to provide a purely decorative aesthetic. From here, pots were either left alone for weeks to dry, or they were fired in a kiln to be used within the week.